Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Random Pets Laboratory Challenge! Where we are resuming with all sorts of exciting mixing and matching of different animal genes today, once more! So I hope you guys are ready, because I have been actually looking forward to this particular experiment for quite some time. Especially because one of the uh, two dog species we are going to be crossbreeding today happens to have a big, big, big place in my heart because it's great danes and not just any great danes you guys a beautiful blue merle great dane that i actually found on the gallery and fell so in love with it is by ann b131 so definitely check them out if you would like to see a kind of more realistic look of a great dane and if you would like to see Zoe! This is what our dog Zoe actually more or less looked like. She was actually spotted merle patterning all over her entire body and she was such a good girl. She lived for seven years, which is, you know, getting up there for a great Dane actually. And she was a very important companion to my mother who's actually bed bound. She was my mom's service dog basically, keeping her company, snuggling up alongside her. And Zoe was so gentle with all of her animals. She loved the other, the other animals in the house. She she took great care of kittens. She loved snuggling with the guinea pig, Robert, and Robert actually thought that she made a really great mountain to run up and down when she was laying on the bed. And she was just such a sweetheart. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but my family used to rescue Great Danes. We've had quite a few in the past. They are such unique dogs. They're one of those dog species, or yeah, dog species, that if you really, or breeds, I should say, there we go. Dog breeds, the more time you spend with them, the more you realize they are so unique unto themselves. And unlike any other species breed, sorry about that, we are mixing species here after all, that you're really going to run into. So I love, 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 love Great Danes, and I would love to know how many of you guys have actually had Great Danes before. And actually, now that I'm staring into her big old eyes, normally our dogs didn't have clipped ears. Our dogs actually had big floppy ears. <laughs> Like this, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and give her floppy ears because we never we never clipped their ears or tail uh, it, and Some of them came to us as rescues with that But the big old floppy ears and those expressive eyebrows That is just such what I remember from our Danes And I would love to know which one of you guys have actually had Danes before because like I said, they're, they're just unlike any other dog breed out there that I have ever had a chance to really spend time with. And I would love to come up with more ideas now that the wonderful Kilala, who is this particular Great Dane here in our lab, has arrived. So now that we've got access to these wonderful high quality Great Dane jeans, we need to think about all sorts of different mixes we could do. Um, maybe like a deer? <gasps> a Dane and a deer would actually be so exciting! Okay, that's on the list. That is absolutely on the list. But keep those ideas coming because all of you are going to be my lab assistants as we slowly but surely rebuild and prepare to expand our random pets challenge with even more episodes of our crossbreeds and potentially even a series based around random pets genetics. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to play with that idea, guys. I think we just may have to play with that idea. But all right, let's go ahead and see the other star of the show because of course, Kilala the Great Dane is not the only set of genes that we have in the lab today. We have got Red the Chihuahua! So he is actually a Chihuahua. It's not supposed to say mixed breed. He is a purebred Chihuahua. And his name is actually Red, after Red Red Panda. And Red Red Panda, I love the idea of crossbreeding a Red Panda and a Fox. I think we would get some amazing results from that. But today, my friend Red Red the Panda, you are going to be a Chihuahua. A adorable, very brave Chihuahua. He's a little bit sassy. He does, he does like to show off his very sharp little teeth. And he is a little bit noisy. And he is surprisingly hairy for a chihuahua. I'm kind of tempted to try to make him along for a chihuahua. Uh, but he is going to stand in as the exemplar gene set for his breed. And he has come to the lab with the bold mission of having, hopefully, many healthy, happy, and adorable looking children with Kilala. 
So guys, this is the crossbreed set that we have today. And just like before, we don't have quite as much of a romance story behind these two because they have both been brought to the lab knowing what their very important genetic research purpose is. However, Kilala is a very maternal, maternal figure. And I actually think Red has within his itty bitty teeny tiny little heart, the desire to really lead a pack of his own children with pride. And Red, by the way, uh, represents the smallest of the officially recognized dog breeds out there. Chihuahuas are listed as one of the smallest of all breeds. While Great Danes are not the largest, that actually belongs to the Tibetan bear dog, bear mastiff. <laughs> we'll talk about them in the future too. But they represent one of the largest. So we're going to see what happens when we bring the biggest dog and the smallest dog together. There isn't a lot of love between them now, but something tells me that the moment that they see the little wagging tails of their pups, we're going to see something amazing. So, it's time. We're going to get our little petri dishes and beakers out. We are going to make a mixed breed, and we are going to pull some of your guys' names from the random comment generator from the comments of our last video. So if you want to end up becoming one of our wonderful, wonderful additions to the lab, all you guys need to do is leave comments, and then the random comment generator will search through all of those comments and randomly, playing on the whole random thing here, select one of you to become a Chihuahua Dane! I have no idea what this is going to look like. What would we even call a Chihuahua Dane? I, I Like, a Great Wawa? I kind of like that name. The Great Wawa. <gasps> and we have our first Great Wawa! If it's going to be big, if it's going to be small, we have no idea. I love the colors! And this is actually going to be Anne, after Anne Doll, who suggests mixing a Doberman and a deer. Ooh, you guys have great ideas. All right, Anne, as our first great Wawa, you are a stubborn couch potato who's jumpy, which sounds so freaking cute. Couch potato is definitely, definitely a Great Dane trait, and jumpy is definitely, jumpy and stubborn are definitely Chihuahua traits from all of the Chihuahuas I have personally known in my life. All right, and we're going to go ahead and immediately get you a new sibling because Kilala is ready to watch over her little litter of great wawas. The next great wawa is going to be, once we add in Red's jeans. Oh, <gasps> so cute! Look at this! Oh, this is going to be Blazing Ember. So, he actually fits his name too. Blazing Ember, welcome. Welcome to the family. You are going to be Harry smart and adventurous and i'm kind of curious to see like which set of ears they grow up with what we're going to end up seeing let's get another great wawa in here we're getting a lot of <gasps> brindle patterning that is another one of the officially recognized colorations on great danes the i don't know if the blue merle patterning which is like gray with a bunch of spots is officially recognized just yet but it is definitely my favorite um it's because it's spots I'm a sucker for spots. <laughs> but all right, the next great Wawa is Callie. Welcome, little Callie. Are you actually, you are a little bit lighter than your sister, Anne. That's so cute. And look at the little spotty nose. Oh, I could be a sucker for a spotty nose as well. All right, Callie, you are actually jumpy, stubborn, and independent. I, I almost feel like that might be a nigh untrainable dog. <laughs> However, you guys are definitely welcome to try to go ahead and train Callie. As always, I will try to share and save save these guys and then share them on the gallery under my Sims 4 gallery name of Blissy underscore Leaves, where you guys can possibly take these little pups home and make them your own, oh, which would be so delightful. All right, let's pull up the next one. And the next little great Wawa, who may grow up to be not so little. Oh! Oh, this is actually going to be Pixel after Pixel the Cheetah. Welcome, Pixel. There we go. And you actually, look at that face. I think this one's going to grow up into more of a Dane. It's really fun to kind of like pick the puppies up and turn them around and like poke and prod them and be like, oh, well, those ears are definitely the Chihuahua ears, but is that jaw the Dane jaw? And does that mean that this one's going to grow up to be a big dog or a small dog? That's part of the thrill of holding each puppy, the potential of what it could grow into. All right, Pixel, you are, 
You can't, you can't give milk, Pixel. You can't produce dairy. Um, I mean, you can, because, like, you're a female dog, but you can't produce dairy like a cow, which is where that custom content comes from. Pixel, you are a loyal couch potato who is adventurous. Oh my goodness. All right, so a loyal, adventurous couch potato. That's kind of cute. That makes me think about, like, a big dog who follows their adventurous owner everywhere very loyally, but takes, like, a snooze whenever it can get a chance. Like, its owner might be like, oh, I really have to, like, do this difficult adventure. And Pixel, what are you doing? And Pixel's, like, taking a nap because the humans are taking so long to figure out how to get across the bridge. That's adorable. Maybe I want to... I've been really thinking about doing, like, a D&D or a roleplay-based thing lately. Maybe Wilder Myth. I really miss that. And I could see Pixel as a good companion on an adventure like that. And then finally, we are going to go ahead and add in the... Wait, no, wait. <gasps> We're missing a puppy! We have two more puppies! What? I thought we were almost done, but no, there's another one hiding. What the heck? There's another one hiding in there. And welcome to Gunner. Hello, little Gunner. That is actually the name of one of my uncle's dogs. There we go. And we have got an independent, vocal, adventurous little pup. I really feel like we've got a lot of adventurous great wawas. Maybe they are like meant for really, really grand things. And then we've got one more. Kilala was hiding one last puppy on us. So far, I think they're all ending up with their dad's coat color. <gasps> but this is definitely a Great Dane coat color right here. Oh, so no spotty little ones. But Kra here is our sixth and final puppy. And we always have future Great Dane mixes that we could create. And he cannot produce wool. And he is a couch potato who's stubborn. <laughs> And a glutton. I feel like we ended up with a bunch of stubborn, adventurous couch potatoes who are jumpy. This is going to be quite the difficult litter of puppies to train, to say the very least. But alright, Kilala is watching over her little ones with pride. Red is watching over his little ones, feeling like, of course at this stage they're all small enough he can guide them around and be a good pack leader. He's totally got this. But let's see if Red's tune changes now that his children are going to begin to grow up. So let's do this, guys. Anne, you're up first. Let's grab our lab coats and take some notes, you guys. <gasps> Anne! Oh, she's so small. I didn't expect her to be small with cute floppy ears and very, very tiny eyes. You kind of remind me of Megamind, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, guys. I actually think she's really cute. I do. Look at her. Oh, Anne. Yeah, she is really cute, you guys. Okay, so she actually turned out to be small, just like her dad. Uh, definitely itty-bitty little eyes, itty-bitty little face, very floppy little ears. She sort of looks like she belongs in some little old lady's lacy purse, doesn't she? So, Anne, you're doing a good job of being you. Definitely, like, I feel like Red is relieved. He's like, phew, okay, I can keep this one in line. I can still lead the pack. All right, but is Ember, who has this strong Great Dane looking jaw, going to end up being bigger than his father? Yep. <laughs> oh, look at this. What a fun coat color. Everything about Ember pretty much turned out to be, um, other than the coat color, turned out to be Great Dane. So yeah, I think that immediately Red's dreams are crushed, but at least he can run around the foot of, uh, you know, the feet of his son. So there we have it. Oh, there you go, Blazing Ember. Honestly, like, everything everything kind of matches. Yeah, everything build-wise kind of matches his mom. He just has his dad's coloration. All right, and then let's go ahead and go to Callie. <gasps> Who also ended up being so big. And you can't have a dragon tail, Callie, so we've got to re-roll. Okay, she just has a normal tail now. Oh, Callie. Look at her, you guys. This is our most stubborn one of all. She's independent, jumpy, and stubborn. She needs one of you guys to take her into your Sims families and really give her a good home that will hopefully be able to train her. All right, next up we have Pixel. <gasps> Pixel! She's got like a really long, expressive mouth, kind of that mournful look that Great Danes are really known for. Oh, she's cute. And of course, with the chihuahua coloring, so far this isn't getting as odd as I thought it would be, but I may have just spoken the fatal words. Okay. <laughs> Connor! You look so much like my niece's dog, actually. 
Wow, that's amazing. He actually looks a lot like my niece's dog. That's really funny. The wrong color, but basically everything about uh, his design. So there, okay. Just as I said, we were kind of ending up with some normal looking dogs. We get something quite interesting. I still think that Anne is the most interesting thus far, but let's go ahead and see what Kra is going to be. Yes. Yes, I spoke the words into existence. I spoke the words into existence of, oh, this isn't quite as extreme as I thought it would be. And Craw, Craw had to let us know that there were still some genetic tricks left up their sleeves. Yes, yes indeed. Craw, you just won. You, you, you won. You, you just absolutely, Craw won, guys. <laughs> All right, that is definitely a fantastic experiment. And I would say that our Great Danes and our Chihuahuas, now having begun to contribute their genes into our laboratory experiments, have plenty more to offer us. So keep those suggestions on what we are going to be crossbreeding next time coming, you guys. Which puppy do you think really exemplifies the sort of wacky randomness we're looking for here in our laboratory? And of course, leave those comments and likes so that you guys will be able to be plucked up by of the random comment generator next time to join the family. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!